So you know how to create a form, you know how to turn it into a quiz, you know how to check your students' responses, now what? Making sure you choose the right type of question to get the answers you're looking for. In this video, we're comparing short answer and paragraph options. When we're talking about that short answer question, you need to be asking something that has one specific, very short answer to it. So for example, what is the name of the formula you can use to find out the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle? Now I told you before, Google is smart. It's always trying to help you. It is giving you a suggested correct answer of the Pythagorean theorem. If you click that, it will add it to the answer key as the correct option. Now, not everybody is a spelling genius. Not everybody is going to include both words. Not everybody is going to capitalize it correctly. So you do need to still go into the answer key and add other options. This is why it's really important that your short answer question has only one real correct answer. So if I go into the answer key, I can add in some alternate spellings. Obviously, I'm not going to get every potential spelling option, but you can see I have a combination of capital and lowercase letters. I have some misspellings. I have some without the theorem at the end at all. If you think you've gotten a majority of possible answers, click mark all other answers incorrect. And this will then automatically grade it. And then of course, give it a point value, click done. But what if you were thinking about this as a paragraph option? What is the difference? Well, let's take a look. All right, so here I have my question. How can you find the length of C in this triangle? In a question worded like this, it's impossible to come up with all the possibilities that students might answer. So don't go into your answer key, just mark it as required. I will still give it some points though, so they know they have to answer it and that it's worth something. Then what I'm going to do, just so we can compare the difference between a short answer and a paragraph response, is I'm going to duplicate this question. And then the only thing about it I'm going to change is that now it's a paragraph option. You'll notice it still has the same point value. You'll notice it's still required. So let's take a look at what this looks like from the student response view. If I go to my preview, I can see those same options like I did before. Now here's where it gets tricky. This line only runs part way through. So you notice right now I can only see this half length of my ending response. I can't see the full thing in any one go. Now if I copy and paste this down into my paragraph response, you'll notice I can see the full answer. And in fact, if I keep explaining, the text actually wraps, which is important for a really good explanation. Now, let's see what this looks like from the teacher view once we've had a few students respond. When you go to your response view, you can see the breakdown of scores that have been automatically graded. Remembering this does not apply to your paragraph questions or some of your short response as they require manual review. As I scroll down, I can see these are the seven students that have answered. It's really easy when I set it up as a checklist. And then there's scores on each of the questions. You'll notice when we get to those short response questions, Google automatically turns it into a bar graph and you have no control over this. For my first question, this isn't a problem because it's so short, it's so specific, there's not multiple options. But when I go down to the second one, you can see that there's places where I can't even see the full answer that a student has given in this preview mode. Whereas if I go down to the paragraph option, it will always show me the full response they have written rather than trying to condense it into an easy to view graph. So when it comes to short response versus paragraph, really think about the type of question you're asking, the number of possible answers, and then go from there. To give feedback on a short response or a paragraph question, go to the question tab at the top of your screen and then choose the question from the drop-down menu. 
And then I can just go down and say, yep, they got it correct, got it correct. Good, they got it. I can save, it'll update their scores, and I can do the same thing for the next question. And I'll see that updated in my summary view. And then I can again release those scores back to my students so they get the updated version. As always, don't hesitate to leave a comment asking a question. I'm always happy to help out and check back for another video about how to use Google Forms to help you out in your classroom.